The first thing I do when a patient arrives is I want to hear from them what they're interested in. I'm not going to make suggestions until I hear it from them. So somebody comes in and they're looking for, quote, facial options. There's a lot of options on the face. So what are you concerned about? Are you concerned about the loose neck? Are you concerned about jowls? Are you concerned about bags under the eyes? Shape of your nose? Your ears are too prominent. Wrinkles on your forehead? What is it that, that bothers you? And then based upon the input from that, I can then discuss with them options. And sometimes there's more than one option from something as minor as an injectable like Botox or a filler like Juvederm um, to a laser skin resurfacing to a full facelift. They're frequently done together. It's very common to do a neck lift, lower facelift, and eyelids combination. So he weighs all your options, he gives you as much information as you need, and then that's when you kind of just decide from there. He doesn't tell you, okay, you need to schedule. He just makes you feel like what the best option for you is. So once I get enough input from them, I can make recommendations whether it's appropriate and if it's possible even to do that. Occasionally they'll bring photographs. They'll have, I want to look like this. And I tell them, I can't give you that nose, but it's a goal. It gives me an idea to, uh, to reach for certain attributes of that nose that you like. Um, so we, it's a dialogue, back and forth, back and forth. Once we've established what they're looking for and that it's reasonable, I have to assess their airway. I want to make sure I'm not going to make a cute nose they can't breathe through. So I'll take them in the exam room, I'll look inside, I want to look at their septum and their turbinates and their internal valve, and I want to make sure everything is, is uh, appropriate. If there's a problem with airway, I'm going to deal with that at the time of the rhinoplasty. He'll tell you exactly how it's going to be by taking your skin and say, we want to get rid of this. Because when, when you know, ladies and I guess men too, they get a little older, you get these jowls coming down like this. And, and he goes and he'll tell you this and takes that. Then he takes the photos, all these photos. Digital pictures, set distances and, and angles, and we put them in the computer and we sit and look at them. And I have some tools, we can uh, morph them, change them, draw them. And I always warn people, this is not exactly what you're gonna look like. This is a uh, representation of what I think. And if you have photos, we'll, we'll use those to compare. Once we do that, I have now a plan, a step-by-step -step plan of what they want what I'm planning on doing. And those pictures come with me in the operating room and I just work until I get with what we discussed. And then I like to follow my patients long term, up to a year. I come back on a regular basis. Obviously early on you have to take off splints and stitches and all that, but after that I'm still going to be seeing them maybe monthly or every other month up to a year. At that point we get their after photos and hopefully we've done what they were hoping to get done.